Good afternoon, welcome to Music Nation. My name is Jacko, and today we're looking at Spitfire Audio's brand new British Drama Toolkit. Downloaded this about three days ago, and I've had a good chance to play with it, and it's certainly a very interesting little beastie, so let's uh, have a look at it today. Um, first off, I'm not going to really work too much on the sounds, although we'll, we'll go through some of the sounds, but Spitfire have done some excellent uh, videos that you can watch to hear what it sounds like. So that's not really the main thing. It's more whether or not this is something that you would use um, as a producer. So as typical for Spitfire audio stuff, if you're aware or maybe you're brand new to it, but they seem to release a new library about every month now. And each time seems to be a totally new uh, platform that they release it on. Even though this is still contact based, it is a, it's left field to anything they've done in the past. So. You might have seen the Hans Zimmer strings recently released in their own proprietary software, and they've had the lab stuff, which is slightly different, but it's similar. Then, of course, before that, they had uh, contact-based Evo grids and um, the Edna stuff and, of course, traditional contact kind of layouts. And even though this one is based in contact, it's actually different from anything else I've seen from them in that it's not dynamics-based um, as in, normally you would play a chord and you would use the dynamics control on your, your controller to, to affect the intensity and you'd normally uh, play with the ADSR to affect the release tails and things like that to get a more uh, believable performance. Whereas this has no dynamics at all and it's totally velocity controlled. So how hard you, you hit your keyboard is how uh, intense the sound is, which is a little concerning. Um, I've never been a fan of that kind of approach. It's never really worked for me in the past. And when I first got this, I was like, oh, I don't know about that. However, it turns out that when you approach this from how I believe it's meant to be used, it really makes sense. And it's actually pretty damn good. So hopefully I can kind of show you how that is today. Because, um, yeah, there's a, lot to be, there's a lot to be found here. Because for a start, Spitfire... Obviously, are a high-end brand. They're expensive products, and though this one is reasonably well priced, it's still expensive, and it's a lot of money. Particularly if you're a new producer, or maybe let's call it a bedroom producer, or you're a breaking through, or you're a composer. You know, this is a fair stack of cash to outlay, and it is a fairly focused product. Um, it's called British Drama Toolkit. It's, it doesn't necessarily have to be British drama you use on however if you are familiar with the, the british drama genre this is absolutely perfect for it like it's not going to work if you're scoring music for like seinfeld or you know friends or something it's just not that type of sound but if you're doing uh more moody atmospheric stuff this is right up your alley so um yeah, so Spitfire, very high-end brand, and what they've released here is still a high-end branded product. However, it's it's like composing easy mode, right? In, in in essence, you can hold down a chord and job's done, right? It's it's that simple. It's more to it than that, of course, but you know you can get away with that. Like it's so much going on with it, so much uh, little details and um, just fine little kind of sounds happening that it's that good you can just kind of play a chord pretty much and get away with it so it's not meant to be a, a total replacement in that way but it is meant to be something that you can run to a queue right say you're, you're scoring a tv show or a uh, small a short film or something like this you can run this music to, so you can record to the queue and basically just play as you think as, as the queue develops as the story unfolds as action unfolds right you can play it in quickly and it sounds pretty good and it's close enough and it gets you something in the computer which is often half the battle when you're starting from scratch you just don't know because there's so many software titles available and there's and they all have different settings and different articulations and microphone settings and stuff whereas this you can pretty much chuck it in choose one articulation and start playing some stuff and it kind of works right so easy mode but not easy replacements uh, an all-in-one replacement easy mode to get you going all right get the ball rolling all right get some ideas generating so it's certainly a very nice sounding so how it works right with this velocity control thing you've probably seen but there's two or three velocity layers in each of the articulations 
and they are triggered by how hard you push down the keys, right? And it stems back to actually how they've recorded it, which is the story in itself. They've, according to the manual, they're a little bit hush hush about it actually, but according to the manual, it's recorded in their HQ. And if you don't know, uh, Spitfire's HQ is in the back end of London somewhere. It's basically an office block. But they do have some nice studios there. So they've recorded a, a band of some description. And judging by the patches here, it contains at least a violin, viola, cello, double bass, bass clarinet, clarinet, flute, and piccolo. Maybe uh, two or three of each, I don't know. But at least that many players. Very closely mic'd in a very dry environment. There's only two microphones included with this. So there's the close mic, which is extremely close, and the decatry. And a decatry is tends to be three microphones, left, right, and a center. And it tends to be about where the compose, uh, the conductor's head is, beg your pardon. So it's technically the best sound in the room. Though I don't believe this has been, and it has and has not been conducted. So they've just put it somewhere in the room that sounds nice. So... And what they've instructed these players to do, each of them, is to play their instrument. So a, a violist, right, would bow at a tempo that feels right. Okay, so there's no tempo, there's no, no one's uh, beating a time signature, it's just whatever feels best for that player. So, and the, viol the violinist will have a different sound, and, and so the clarinets, they, they would blow to their breath, you know what I'm saying? So each of these instruments has a different loop point. So we're getting a similar type of thing that what the, what Spitfire did with Swarm, in that when you play a large chord, you're getting multiple players playing different kind of sounds, depending on how hard you hit it. And on top of that, which is the really interesting thing, is this is not recorded as an ensemble, it's recorded as a group of soloists. So one key can be anything from a textured background to a solo instrument depending on how hard you hit which is quite neat so basically you can play a chord like this and any number of these keys I've been playing can then come out as a solo instrument and then sync back in So the intent behind this, as I'm trying to allude to before, is that you don't have to think about this keyboard, the software, or anything. You can kind of put it to one side and just focus on what's happening on your on your 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 footage. So we could let's just have a quick play here. So we could be watching some kind of B-roll, and it's just got a nice textured kind of background going there. And then maybe like a little bit of action happens. And then maybe it gets a bit scary or something. So in a very quick way, you can just kind of get some scratchy ideas down. And since it's all MIDI, you can then go back and either overlay it with other uh, libraries or replay it in, whatever you like. But you've got something in your computer, which is super cool. So, yeah, so it's a collection of individual soloists, right? So you can play a solo anywhere you want. And um, the... The only thing really uh, defining the solo is is how hard you hit it. So there's kind of there's at least two velocity layers, sometimes three. In this case, we're looking at this uh, main patch here, which does have three. So a very soft would be in the texture range. A bit harder would be in the soft range, and really hard is up there in the solo range. So you've got quite a bit of uh, scope there to play with. Um, so the problem being. And I will highlight a couple of issues, which actually don't, uh, which I thought at first, but haven't actually been as problematic as I first thought. But the big problem with velocity controlled libraries is that whatever you hit is what you own. So if you're playing and then you hit that note there, I can't change it. See, Don, that nothing works, right? No, you, you just, that's what it is. The only way to change it is to re trigger it. So if you're playing and then you accidentally whack it too hard, too bad. Well, you don't hit it hard enough, tough. 
so you have to be quite skilled at how well you 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 know you're familiar with the feel which is good you know you can it is quite forgiving however if you just kind of if you're doing a beautiful soft piece then you just accidentally it's like, ah sh it's done you know you can't back out of that you can't just quickly turn that into dynamics or something so that is one thing although i do have a quick uh little hack so to speak to get around that but i'll talk about the second problem and that is the um the balance between the textures and the solos is also uncontrollable so even if you have a nice texture running the solos have to be this loud because it's in the solo kind of level of velocity right you can't change it right so if you wanted that beautiful texture to be more up you can't it's just the way it is so <clears throat> two little things which i first thought are uh, problematic actually not as bad as i thought because firstly i'll show you how, how i got around this balancing one which is actually easier than i thought so all you're going to do is run two instances okay so i've got two instances of the same articulation same patch and they're both running an omni channel so you see both are playing there and all you need to do actually is just go into the settings here and go to the instrument options and you'll get this thing here and just you get to split the keyboard right so the top one i'll split it from c2 up to say c2 or thereabouts a sharp two that'll do close enough close so now it plays if i just solo this top one here all the low stuff up to about about there nothing else up here works right and then of course do the same for this except the other way around so that there will start at a to somewhere about there close enough for example so there's nothing down low actually i'll just solo that nothing down low but it's all up high so now of course i can change my um, balance so this is the texture on it to be quite say very quiet for instance and the solo I want to be very loud or perhaps you want it the other way around so you want like a nice check texture and not so much of the solo so let's a really quiet lovely and then solo even less say whatever you get what i'm saying like you can you can balance it so that's one little kind of workaround which is um i've been using which works and the other thing is the velocity right i was mentioning before you can't change the velocity has to be what it is um on a keyboard like this which is an 88 note weighted piano it's you've got to whack the heck out of the keyboard to get it to sound right so everything like i play my normal play style is about there which is somewhere halfway between texture and soft to get into sorry let me just turn this up a little bit to get into the solo area i've got to I'm sure you can hear my keyboard coming through the microphone. It's got to really whack it, right? So um, I don't like doing that. I'd prefer to actually have that velocity controlled on a, on a fader. So there's a way of doing this, right? So inside Reaper, if you use Reaper, I'm sure other doors do this as well. You can have MIDI control uh, plugins. Reaper has this really neat one called MIDI velocity control, which is exactly what it does. And one of the faders in here is minimum velocity. The other is maximum velocity. So in zero minimum and 127 maximum it's default but i can make the minimum velocity whatever i like so say it's up here say 100 or so that means the minimum amount of velocity going in is going to be 103 and you can see on the contact display here if i bring this down to zero and i'll just hit at the same velocity right it's down there but if i bring up this fader here I'm artificially increasing the velocity 
up to where I want. So the, the solo start up at 115, I think it is. So if I make the minimum velocity 113, everything I play, no matter how soft, is soloing. And I don't have to smash my keyboard. And what's super, super cool is that you can apply um, a MIDI controller to this. So all you need to do is select the fader that you want to work with, go up to parameters here, put show and track controls, blink, and you'll see on the track controls it will turn up down here. Right, so I'm controlling that. And then we just assign a MIDI control to that. So learn MIDI control and that will come up and I'll make it this fader here. Channel 1, CC21, cool. So now this fader on my piano is controlling the velocity. So of course, when it's right down, it's fully open. And then I can throttle it. Because I think the problem with bashing your keyboard, you lose the feel, you know, like if, you, if you've got this beautiful kind of subtle thing and then you get a wacky keyboard, it's like, eh, I can't get that, you know, but with the, the, uh, the velocity being controlled by fader, it's kind of fake velocity because it doesn't, you can't do a ramp up, I can't change a note once it's been triggered, but I can only change the next note. But it's better than trying to smash your keyboard, I think. So there we go. So there are a couple of little tricks that I, I've found out which um, help. So getting into the sounds themselves, of course, fantastic. I mean, I'm not going to go through all these sounds because Spitfire kind of cover this in great depth. But they're, um, looking at the, what you get, you have a main, you have an ensemble patch, and then you've got individual pieces, individual instruments. The main is a collection of all the individuals arranged uh, smartly. All right, I'll go through them in a sec. Ensembles are the individual instruments arranged in little banks. And then, of course, individuals are individuals. If you go to the advanced menu here, you can actually load up individual um, articulations to, if you want to save on, on resources, which is probably a good idea to actually have them all split out. But um, if you, when, when you're learning and you're starting, just start with the main. Main is very nicely done. So each of these articulations... If you're brand new to the world of contact and Spitfire, an articulation is a collection of samples. Um, usually with Spitfire, they are a collection of sample lengths, so they'll call them longs or shorts or something like that, and they mean like a long semi brief note versus a short staccato note, or they'll pizzicato, or they'll have different kind of terms of play styles, right? In this case, however, it's slightly different, that these samples are... Are the layered samples and they've got this kind of you need to decipher what they're talking about here but um, articulation one tutti long string loud what they mean is that the long notes are tutti in the texture range and the strings are in the loud range so if we play soft everything's tutti tutti by the way means everything so the whole band all playing at about the same velocity so everybody so this is 2D. And then when I hit into the loud, it then goes to strings. So 2D everybody. I think if you had a synth action keyboard, this wouldn't be such a big problem, but on a weighted keyboard, boy, you've got to smack those keys. Anyway, so that's uh, articulation number one. Articulation number two, tutti long string accentuated. So tutti, same thing, everybody in textures. And then when you get into the solo, it's accentuated strings, which is neat. It's a, it's a sharp attack, and then it rolls off back to tutti. So you get... See... So you play 2D here, um, then the solo. So the idea behind that is you can do like a nice little melodic kind of solo up here. Okay, let's go low.
lovely. <clears throat> Okay, next articulations. And you can kind of get an idea of what you're going to get by the pictures that they've got on here. So the first one is a semi brief so it's a long. That little divot is a accent. This next one is going to be a long as well, right? So it says tutti long winds loud. So tutti is everybody's in textures. And a solo will be winds. <laughs> Next one, PP means very quiet, so um, Tutti will be super quiet, and the solo will be long. And in fact, you can see here, this is one of the ones that has two velocity layers. The solo, soft. Very cool. You can hear this bobbling kind of chattering of, of instruments underneath, it's lovely. I love the breath, it almost sounds like a vinyl record. Listen, if I can just do this really quiet. You can on some of the wind instruments, you can, all you can hear is breath. It's brilliant. Okay, next articulation. Uh, st strings uh, in the texture range and then loud woodwinds on the solo range. And you see th these articulations are split out, so at the top we've got our piccolos, up here somewhere, and then we'll come down to flutes, then down to clarinets, then bass clarinet. So there will be some kind of crossover, but basically, yeah, you can't do a complete run in piccolo, for instance, right? It'll go from piccolo through the other instruments. Um... Another point, actually, I've just kind of remembered I should tell you about too, which is a little bit tricky, is of course you can't hold a triad note chord with your expression pedal, right? The pedal under my desk here. If I hold that, so if, actually, so it makes more sense. If I try and hold like a double-handed note, like that, right? Now if I try and play the solo, it's going to sound like rubbish. Because everything's being held. So this is a little bit of a, another problem you need to work around. You can only hold what your hand can hold. So if you play a chord here, I'm not holding the expression pedal, right? Ah, uh, the hold pedal. Now I can solo. And vice versa, I can hold on this hand. And solo down here. So it's another thing you've got to, you can't just kind of make mammoth chords and hold and then solo on them. But you could, I guess, if you had the trick I did before, so this MIDI channel, for instance, could be held on this one, and you could disable your expression pedal somehow on another instance. Yeah, so another, probably another trick around that as well. But out of the box, yeah, this is a problem. One hand has to be uh, ensemble, and one hand has to solo. Either way, you can't have both. It just won't work. So for better or for worse, you can only play probably five instruments at the most. If you can play a five finger chord something, I can't do that. I can do like four finger chords. <laughs> so another little slight limitation. And now let's move on. Next articulation, the PP is strings and soft woodwind. So strings is texture. And I'll play woodwind solo down here. Um, we've got texture as woods and loud strings. Oh, this is what I was talking about before. Listen to this breath. Crazy, eh? Sounds like a vinyl record. Actually, ugh. Cool. 
you do get a feel for this. So the more you muck with it, the more it really makes sense. It's it, it's kind of daft if you're trying to perform with it because it's you know you got this and stuff doesn't work. There's no dynamics and ugh. but if you're performing to a, a, a cue, it really does because you know you just you get familiar with the articulations and you can swap articulations in the fly, of course. So like you know, for instance, we'll go back to articulation one. So as that's playing, I can then cue up articulation two and do my solo. Maybe articulation, uh, that one there. I like the woods for the solo. Sorry. See, I'm still holding this texture from about three articulations ago. very expressive it's very tactile very immersive actually when you I, I was actually going to run a, a queue for you guys but I've a little bit concerned about copyright issues so I won't but just trust me when you're running to a queue it really makes sense because you get a feel for it it's it feels alive actually it's quite interesting um so then I'm, I'm gonna probably leave it about there because we're already at nearly half an hour talking about talking on so um if you want more of the sounds, go check out Paul Henson's. He's done a fantastic video of all the sounds. Everything sounds incredible, right? so don't worry about that. The uh, Whether or not this is for you is whether or not this gels with the way you write. If you're a, a composer who writes to strict timing or maybe you write for band music or pop music or something, I'm not too sure what you'll find with this. If you are someone who writes totally freehand, um, unscripted, un, you know, to, to movie, to film, or you're an artist who likes experimental stuff, this is incredible. And I'm only just running just this single instance here. Of course, if you lay these up, boy, it just gets very, very cool, very quickly. So, um, yeah, like I said, I don't want to kind of focus too much on the sounds of it, because it is, it is, and I'll be happy to, I'm happy to tell you it all in tune too. Like often, not well, Spitfire, but sometimes with these libraries, they don't tune them particularly well. So, um, like when you play it with the piano, It's all so I'll just turn this up a little bit. So yeah, great, awesome tuning. Um, I love how the band have their own uh, time signature. Like it's all just thrown to the wind, right? They just play as sounds best, and they it really does sound very incredible, very lifelike. So anyway, there we go. An overview, a little bit of a layman's um, perspective on it. Um, hope this has been helpful. And um, if you have any questions, fly away. Um, or of course, jump onto Spitfires and ask ask them. They're, very nice guys and they'll definitely reply to you so thanks this has been jacko from music nation say music nation blah stay tuned we've got more videos to come <laughs> it's late in the evening i'm so sorry more videos to come and uh this is it so thanks so much we'll catch you on the flip side bye